In today's healthcare equipment market, success is not based on good products or good salespeople alone. Building trust, brand preference and sustainable growth with customers requires involvement and professionalism of many others too. Today we're going to interview Gert-Jan van der Weyden, Director Customer Service and Operations for Philips Healthcare Benelux. Gert-Jan joined Philips in 2001 and has held positions in marketing, customer service and operations since that time. We will speak about Gert-Jan's approach to these challenges, his view on people development as a key element of this approach and his view on the future. Philips has been working with Mercury International since 2005 as their global partner for sales development. In 2010, Gert Jan saw a need for a cooperation for, from his customer service and operations uh, perspective. This interview will focus on how Gert Jan has approached uh, the challenges and how he has successfully led his team to a different way of approaching. We will also discuss the challenges and the successes and in the end look at how he sees the future of his unit in this changing market environment. Thank you, Gert-Jan, very much for, for sharing uh, your experiences with us. Um, could you perhaps describe the, the background of the Trusted Advisor program? As Philips Healthcare, we are active in, uh, in selling and servicing med medical imaging equipment and patient monitoring equipment to our uh, customers who are basically uh, hospitals. Mm -hmm. And in the Benelux, we are a market leader. But to maintain this market uh, leader position, we believe we have, to be, we have to differentiate ourselves even more from competition than we do right now. And what we see as an important choice, uh, important chance for differentiating ourselves, is to differentiate ourselves on service. Because mm -hmm. we believe we can be the leader in service, we can become the, the number one in service. And we can do that because we have a, a large network of very well-trained and experienced service engineers. We have a big group of project managers. We have application specialists. And we already trained them for years in all kinds of technical skills. Mm -hmm. But we recognize to really become the leader in service, it's also important that we present ourselves in the right way to our customers. We know how to deal with difficult situations. We, we listen well. And all those soft skills, we up till now, we never really invested in. And as we see our people as our most important uh, asset, we decided to start a training program uh, in, in, in developing those soft skills. And that's what, what we call the Trusted Advisor uh, program. Right. Because we believe that you should not just be a good technician, uh, mm -hmm. you should also be able to deal well with, with the customer. And that's uh, a Trusted Advisor, somebody who communicates well, and somebody who's, you know, who has the right technical skills, which right. is, of course, always uh, the basis. What was the reason for working with Mercury International? Selecting mm -hmm. Mercury was a natural choice because Mercury is already uh, for quite some years a uh, partner of Philips in uh, organizing all kinds of training programs and we have been uh, satisfied with your services uh, so far. So it was a natural choice and I think also an important aspect was we see this first program in the, in the Benelux as a pilot and if the results uh, would be good then we are planning to roll it out also in other regions of the world and of course uh, Mercury has a worldwide presence so that's, uh, that's important for us. So during the analysis phase of the project, where your team and your managers um, evaluated themselves on the competence grid of Philips, how has that contributed to the, to the success of the program? I think the joint vision is very important then, because we were kind of trying to capture the voice of the customer and the mm -hmm. voice of our employees. And we also made some video, uh, some video takes, and they were important so that also during the training we could show certain things and make right. people aware of how we yeah. deal with customers and how we should deal with customers and we could mm -hmm. also see we could, we could uh, present some things that were not okay and some things that, that are very okay. And I think those real life examples uh, really make it alive. Yeah, and they liked it in the training as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> because they were seeing their own colleagues yeah. in, in real life situations, so that was good. And I think the most important thing of the survey was basically that we learned that uh, most of our people were quite happy with the way that they were working. Uh, maybe that was also quite logical uh, because we, we never asked them to work in a different mm -hmm. way. Um, and, and they, so what we learned is that they were not really seeing a need for change. And it was important to recognize that because from that moment that we became aware that we had to, 
to start the program with a kind of burning platform and make people aware of the need for change. Eh? Because right. we are really convinced that we have to do things a little bit different because the market is changing, our customers are changing, and we just have to do a little bit better. Another step that we did before, we actually did the workshops with the service engineers and later the project managers and the application specialists. How do you look back on the managers in the training program to prepare them for their role? We had a specific program for the, for the managers, for the, our service leadership uh, team. And I really see that now eh, as, a, as a crucial step because uh, to involve those people and to make them really um, believers, I think that's really, really key because as long as they are not real believers, then it, the program will never fly. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. was a very important step. It was also uh, good fun eh, to work with the team and, and to have that training specifically for the, for the service leadership team. I was also present at, at the training for, for a couple of days. And it was a very interesting part of the, of the program. I think what we recognized that this is a broader program than just something for the engineers. So we, we, we recognized that it was important also to involve other people from the management and other stakeholders and at least make them aware of the things we're working on so mm -hmm. that they are aware and that they can also have some discussions with engineers or with other people and to um, involve bigger parts of the of the company. I think that that was important. Eh? So for example, also account managers and, and right. their managers, at least they have to be aware of the program because yeah. they can support it and they can also benefit uh, from it. changes for your team are and were quite challenging. Now how has the, the workshop for the actual team helped in creating that change you think? Yeah, I think important part of the workshop for, for the, the engineers and also the project managers and the application specialists, I think very important was the start and making people aware of, of the fact that how they present themselves is important. Eh? How they talk about Philips, how they talk about the brand, how they present themselves. Because we still had a lot of people who thought if I do the the job, if I fix the, the equipment, if I do the job right from a technical point of view, uh, everybody should be happy because I, I've done the right thing. Right. And of course, uh, that's still the basis for everything, uh, making sure that you do the right thing from a technical point of view. But how you explain that to the customer and how you communicate when you're entering the building and how you say goodbye to the customer and explain to the customer what you, ha what you have done, that is relevant and is important. Uh, that's something not all people were aware of. So mm -hmm. we explained that and I think the end everybody understood that and, 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 and can see that their role is bigger than just fixing the equipment. It's also about fixing the customer and dealing mm -hmm. also with, with difficult situations and uh, these kind of things. So, this, so this, this awareness was the first thing. The, in the second part of the, of the workshop, so we started to, to give people uh, tools and training how to work, how to communicate yeah. to customers and how to work with difficult situations. So with all kind of role plays and in real life situations. And I think practicing that uh, really helped to, to, to make people feel more comfortable uh, with these kind of uh, things. And I think it was also good that we had, first we had the training and then we were going back to work for a couple of weeks and then we had a, had a comeback day uh, where, where we had a discussion what what went okay, what went wrong, and we could have good discussions with uh, within the, the teams. The middle management, they had first the training and, and that was really important uh, because in the session with the engineers, uh, it was important that their managers were asking for change and were really explaining why they believed that we had to do certain things in a, in a different way. So I think that the, the direct managers have played a very important role in the, in the whole program. What has been done and will be done to further follow up and bad the way of working of a trusted advisor for the role of the people in your team in daily life? The key is that this should not be just an isolated event eh, because then it will it will flow away uh, mm -hmm. easily. So this is just the start, I would say, the, the training. And key is that it becomes now part of our, let's say, normal DNA. So we will make it part of, uh, of our coaching discussions w with our people. We will, will make it part of our development discussions. We will make it part of the, the job profile. We will make it part of the, of the hiring criteria. So it should be a natural part of, of all the things we do. And I think uh, that that's, that's really key, because if you just have a one or two day training, then it will die uh, quite easily. What kind of changes do you see in results or way of working for Philips? Yeah, I think, uh, of course, what you hope for is to see an increase in customer satisfaction and in, in the end, in, in, in customer loyalty. 
Uh, but I think that will take some time and will not go automatically from one week to the other. So mm -hmm. that will take months, quarters, maybe even years. And what we do measure uh, quarter over quarter is our NPS. And I hope to see uh, some increase in, in NPS and in the end increase in, uh, in, in customer loyalty. Uh, but what I do see at the moment uh, in, in, in our way of working is that it, it's now becoming more or less an, uh, an, a normal part of our DNA, yeah? talking about soft skills and talking about how to communicate to, to customers. And now people are aware that it, that it is relevant how they present themselves to the customer. And I think right. that's already a big step, uh, yeah. big step forward. And for example, the other day or the other week, I was in a discussion about hiring somebody, uh, somebody new. And then one of our people said, yeah, it's a good technician, but it's not really a trusted advisor. And I thought, oh, okay, now it's it, it's starting to, to sink in. To sink in, and people started using it. We have a new set of, of tools, a new a new language, and uh, uh, how we can discuss about certain things. It's becoming more and more natural uh, to have a discussion between an, an engineer and, a, and an account manager. And they respect each other, and then just the technician or just the project manager, they have, can have much more impact on the customer than that they thought at the beginning. Do you see any change in the way that your service engineers are cooperating with account managers in the district? I think this cooperation is now going much more natural because I think key thing is that our engineers, our application specialists, our project managers now understand that their role can be much bigger than they thought before eh? because they hear certain things from customers and, and they are aware of certain things and it's key that they communicate these things to the account managers eh? because they can benefit from that. Uh, by making people aware of that, we now have like 180 extra set of eyes in the market every day visiting our customers. What kind of advice would you give to, to companies who have similar situations with more technical people who need to move to, let's say, also a bit more customer-focused approach. Companies like ours, and I think there are a lot of companies l like us, in the end, uh, people uh, are your most important uh, asset, and uh, I think it's, it's, it really makes sense to invest in that asset, in your people, and, and not just invest in the technical skills, but also invest in soft skills, and I think that in the end will really, uh, really pay out. So I would really advise other companies also at least to think about it and, and to decide if it, if it makes sense uh, also uh, for them. And, and some of the learnings that I would also advise mm -hmm. to others there is that it should not just be a training, it should be an integrated part of the way you work and, and the way you deal with situations, and it, 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 should, it should not be a one-off, not just one or two days of, uh, of training. That's a key thing. Another key thing is to create, uh, create a burning platform. You have to make people aware of the need for change. And because if you don't do that, then nothing will happen. Uh, because I think also due to the fact that not all technical people are from themselves or also great communicators. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of good examples of people who do that already from themselves and already have those skills, but, but not all of them. And I would say in commercial roles, people tend to be more communicative already from themselves. Eh? But that's already a strength of a lot of those people. Yeah, I think uh, we have the clear ambition to become really, uh, to really become the number one in, uh, in service and we really want to be, be recognized in the eyes of our customers as the number one in service. And that's really our ambition and that we will uh, continue to work on. And I am convinced that we will be able to, uh, to grab that uh, position. Well, thank you, Gert-Jan, very much for, uh, for sharing your experiences and, and thoughts with us. And um, looking forward to, uh, to work with you in the, in the future again. Yeah. yeah, also thank you, Harry, for all your hard work you, you and your team did for our company. And I'm really uh, convinced that it will help us uh, to make uh, the next step. Uh, uh, thanks. Considering the challenges that you've mentioned concerning this, uh, this turnaround of your team, what would you say have been the keys to success? A couple of things that uh, popping into my mind. Um, I would say one of, the, one of the really key things is that you have to involve the, the staff, the middle management, because mm -hmm. those people are really key in this program. If you don't have them on board, it, 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 it will never work. So they really have to be believers. Now I would say that's an important thing. Another important uh, thing I learned, and I also, also believe is an important step in the program, is that you have to create a kind of burning platform. You have to, may have to make people aware of the need for change, yeah. because if they're not aware of that, then they're not open to change and it, it will just not happen. The third thing that comes to my mind is that it should not be an isolated event, the training, not just a one or two day training and then everybody goes to his job and doing his work as he used to do it before. 
but it should be part of a consistent approach. So it should be part of the coaching, it should be part of the development discussions you have with, with, with the people, it should be part of the job profile, it should be part of the hiring criteria. So it should be something that, that's coming back and back and back, because only then you will be able to, to reach a sustainable change. Because we believe if you want to present ourselves in a professional way, also the way you're dressed, I think is important. So we will now introduce company clothing. And I'm convinced that also due to this program, people are much more open to that making that step than they were before the program.